Good evening. It's called devolution. And what it means, of course, is that administrations, be they in Scotland or Wales or local mayors, will take whatever national government does and take it even further. And in this context, today saw coming into law the Hate Crime and Public Order Act Scotland 2021. Now, we've had hate crime legislation, in a sense, since 1986. What's the object of it been? Well, to stop incitement, uh, to stop language that might encourage behaviour that would genuinely be dangerous. That's always been the bar. My worry with this legislation is it contains words like likely. You know, is what you've said likely to perhaps cause somebody uh, to be seriously hurt, whether that's physically or emotionally? Um, and we've even lowered the bar so much that terms that are insulting could be drawn within this legislation. By the way, the maximum penalty if you break this law is an unbelievable seven years in prison. I'm not quite sure what this means for J.K. Rowling, who says quite clearly that trans women are not real women. Will she be one of the first victims of this? I simply don't know. Whilst we do want to live in a society that is civil to each other, and whilst I think we all understand uh, that incitement is genuinely dangerous and wrong at every level. Here's my real worry about this legislation. Let's say two people have a bust up, a fallout. It could be in business, it could be within a family. It could be an argument in a pub. And somebody can go and make a complaint to say that you've said something absolutely outrageous, deeply unpleasant, without any evidence whatsoever. That goes on to a police file. The police look at it and say there is a lack of evidence. And yet, that will be recorded on your police file as a non-crime hate incident. And even though you've done nothing wrong whatsoever, you're just the victim of a vexatious attack, that is going to be on your file forever. And that, to me, is a very dangerous, slippery slope. Love your thoughts. Do you agree with me? Am I getting perhaps too paranoid about it? Tell me I'm wrong. Is this dangerous? Farage at gbnews.com. And I'm joined in the studio by Fadi Farhat, senior legal consultant at Gulbenkian Andonian Solicitors and veteran LGBT campaigner Peter Tatchell. Fadi, let's begin with you. This does lower the bar, doesn't it? You know, in the past, with, with, with the hate legislation, the Race Relations Act, etc., Public Order Act that we've had, this legislation has been there for 40 years. Uh, you kind of had to say something that clearly and unequivocally was expressing hatred against the group and perhaps even incitement. This has lowered the bar considerably. That's correct. So in the past, we've had, st I mean, the, the, there has always been a criminal offence of stirring up hatred yeah. or by reference to race. That's always been in the Public Law Act uh, of 1986. Uh, this goes further by um, expanding or by including all the protected char characteristics. So now we have um, age, disability, transgender identity, um, and other, th and other um, well, the, the, the various protected characteristics. So it goes further in that sense, but it also eliminates the current structure whereby you have to have an intention to do so. So it, an intention is, um, is not uh, the only thing that can amount to a criminal offence. It's whether it's likely what's been said or done is likely. Which is a very subjective uh, judgment. Yes, so um, that's raised concerns that um, you're criminalising not just what you believe, what, but you could be criminalised for what you're perceived to believe, which are two different things entirely. They are. So what happens if there's a 17-year-old and he or she have fallen out with their parents? A fairly common occurrence in most families. Can they report their parents? Uh, in theory, yes. Um, the only distinguishing feature there is I suspect that um, because it was in a private setting, there may be no public interest to prosecute, but that just goes to the prosecutorial decision of whether to prosecute or not, not necessarily whether an offence has been committed or not. Puts a huge amount of power, doesn't it, in the hands of judges and the courts? Yes. And would these... Do you think most of these cases would go to jury trial or not? No. Um, well, they, they are... Um, they can go either way. So, depending on the... Um, depending on what's been said, depending on the seriousness or whether there's any aggravating yeah. features, you can go to a jury, yes. Um, there is, though, um, the Scottish Government is... Um, does stress that there is an inbuilt defence uh, 
Um, so there is an inbuilt defence by reference to freedom of expression. Um, and whether what's been said or done is reasonable in the circumstances by reference to freedom of expression, which does include um, one's right to a shock and offend. But of course, the line is blurred and mm. much of what's been said is um, if we take um, um, transgender issues, mm -hmm. uh, the concern which J.K. Rowling has is, yeah. of course, much of these issues are subject to ongoing public debate or ongoing public discourse. So they're not necessarily settled, <laughs> such as, for example, Holocaust denial, mm. where we have the evidence of history and the full weight of history to mm. know that that happened. Um, other areas are not quite settled in, in, in the public uh, discourse, such as, for example, sport and the role of transgender um, competitors in sport. Which is no, not the exclusion of transgender, but the role debate. of trans yes, yes. Peter Tatchell, I mean, should J.K. Rowling be allowed to say that trans women are not real women? Well, first let me say, I broadly support this legislation. Mm. It has a good aim to protect people against hate. I have a number of caveats, though. First of all, it does extend the race hate laws to other protected characteristics, yeah. but not to travellers or women who are both victims of a lot of hate. And that's a big failing. Now, I know the Scottish Government is planning to bring in a misogyny bill to cover women, but why should they be covered in separate legislation? They should be covered in the same legislation. Separating women out is, that's not equality, that's segregation. Um, the other issue is, of course, many of the terms in this bill or this act um, are open to subjective interpretation. Yeah, as we just said. So what is a reasonable person? A reasonable person may have a different interpretation. There are terms like uh, malice, ill will, prejudice, hate. None of them are defined. So the question is, how will they be interpreted? Now, there are freedom of of, of expression protections. So it does say it very explicitly in the Act that it will not preclude or not cause an offence if you merely criticise or discuss an issue. So, for example, saying that yeah, trans but you, women but if you are insult, not, if you insult... Well, that, well this is... So, this, so does J.K. Rowling insult yeah. trans women, in your opinion? Well, I don't, I don't think that falls within the realm under this legislation of insult, because it got, it's got the protection that it's a, a, a valid discussion and, and a criticism. Mm, right. well, now, that, other people may disagree, but that is what the legislation says. It gives that also gives very strong yeah. protections to religion. So it says it's OK to um, dispute, disagree, criticise, ridicule and even insult religion. So there's protections for comedians, films, right. stage plays that may satirise religion. Well, that's something. Here's my worry. My worry is, you know, I mentioned it earlier, the vexatious complaint that gets registered as an NCHI, a non-crime hate incident. Here's the horrifying bit. You know, you or I go for a job, yep. and our employer wants the enhanced police check, quite rightly. And in, on that enhanced police check, it will show up mm. that you were reported, an allegation was made. I mean, this, you know, this could damage people's lives, yep. innocent people's lives. Well, it's going to be made worse because under this Act, Reporting can be done by third-party centres, which means you don't have to be a victim yourself, but someone, Joe Bloggs or whoever, Jane Bloggs, can report it. But also it can be reported anonymously via Crime Stoppers. Now, these two aspects mm. open the floodgates mm. to vexatious, malicious complainants yeah, absolutely. and could absolutely flood the police with unjust, unfounded allegations which would tie up police resources, mm. and as you say, when it goes on to a, a non uh, yeah, hate and damage people's lives. Now, let's just show a clip of the Scottish First Minister, Humza Yusuf, speaking just over a year ago in the Scottish Parliament. I'm very keen to get both of you to comment on this. Here he is. Lord President, white. The Lord Justice Clark, white. Every High Court judge, white. The Lord Advocate, white. The Solicitor General, white. He doesn't seem to like white people very much, does he? Uh, he has, <laughs> on the basis of that clip, there, well, there's an issue. I don't yes. know. But here's the point about something that is so subjective. I mean, you know, some people, Peter, could interpret that as being really quite aggressive about white people holding positions of rank mm. and power. Well, of course, I'm sure he wasn't saying that. But with all these things, it has to be looked at in terms of context and intention. So under the legislation, uh, there isn't a clause about intention. Mm. It, it's either a person intends or is likely, or likely to behave in ways that are threatening, abusive or insulting. Interestingly, some years ago, the Westminster Parliament removed the insulting clause from the Public Order Act 
on the grounds it was too sweeping and too wide. Yeah. And now the insulting clause has been put yeah, back in. Yeah, because it's student politics. That's what it's all about. Now, there has been a demo outside the Scottish Parliament today, and I'm joined down the line from Edinburgh by Alan Miller, co-founder of the Together Declaration. Um, Alan, how big was the protest and, and what sort of people were there? Well, it was brilliant, Nigel. It was really big. Uh, and lots of people from all over, really. There were unionists, there were Republicans, secular people, there were pastors speaking, uh, people that were non-affiliated politically. There were lots of campaigners from uh, Free Speech Union, Academics for Academic Freedom, from Stu, the uh, Scottish Union of Education, who are very concerned about reporting stations that already exist at universities and other places, over 400 of them, where you can report college uh, teachers and staff and children when they say things. This is an egregious draconian uh, act. It is utterly contemptible. In the land that gave us the Scottish Enlightenment, that James Madison enshrined in the Constitution with free speech, we're now seeing it suffocated. It's an attack on the Scottish people, no matter what political affiliation you're from, because We've got to remember, Nigel, that you and I might disagree about things, but we never get to get clarity in a democracy unless we can thrash these things out. And when they say you're stirring hate, does that mean that someone subjectively just thinks what you're saying is reprehensible? Well, Voltaire reminded us, didn't he? He said we should be able to and he would die for the right to be offended by someone else. That's what we need to have in Scotland. And that's why together are here supporting the challenge against it. We're encouraging all our signatures and all your viewers, Nigel. The elections are coming up. This is a scandal and outrageous. OK, well, we're not going to get involved with elections uh, because that would be quite difficult, uh, given where we are in the timetable. But no, Alan, really interesting. And uh, I'll tell you what, introducing a touch of Voltaire to proceedings this evening, I thoroughly approve of. Thank you.